Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part two of the right console build. In this video we're going to take some time to look at the progress made with the panels in terms of their development and construction. Let's buckle up. At this point in the build of the right console, I'm working on a number of panels all at the same time and they're all at different stages. And what we'll do now is just take some time to look at the development of them up to this point. After a fair amount of time of undertaking and completing the CAD CAM design, which is all of the drawings of the panels, I now move to the machining phase that we can see. And what we can see here are two large pieces of acrylic which represent the full cutting area of this CNC machine to squeeze out just as many panels as we can. So what we can see now is all of the acrylic once fully machined. As usual all of the panels are machined out of acrylic which has been painted black but then what we can also see is grey painted acrylic which this is now for all of the caps which will be the front of all of the push buttons. Whilst at the machining stage I also cut some MDF and this is to be a spacer for the new revised caution light panel. I take some time now to clean up the new fascias and also to just paint around the edges just so there's no bleed of light uh, when it's backlit. These are each of the caps at the front of each push button for the right console so this covers all of the CDU and the countermeasures panel. And where I can, I squeeze every last bit of space out of the acrylic sheet. And in this case, I've cut a spare for each and every one should I need it. Uh, we'll now just take a closer look at those. I also, as can be seen in the corner here, run a number of test prints of what will be the body of the cap just to see which is going to be the best with the best tolerance to click onto the LED tactile switches. After choosing the body of the cap that has the best fit, I 3D print a whole batch of them and I then glue the fascia of the cap to it and then paint the side so any uh, during the transmission of light um, through that it doesn't bleed out the sides. And then I just finish them off by sealing them with some lacquer. And that works its way nicely into creating the keypad for the CDU. I then mount this keypad at the rear of the fascia of the CDU and also install the screen. Over the years I've picked up a, a fair few different screens and in my test for the CDU display I tried screens that were 3.5, 4.3 and 5 inch in size. Of these a 3.5 inch display was one I've gone with and the approach I took was one that was detailed by the Dutch Warthog and the link to that is in the description to this video if you'd like to see more about how that works. With the display chosen, I've run a number of tests with that over at IRQ Serial and I'm also running some tests here to see how it behaves over an RS485 network. I take the few caps that were also produced for the countermeasures panel at this point and mount those onto some custom PCBs I've put together which can then be built into the fascia we see before us now. And I find it really interesting to now complete the construction of the countermeasures panel and run it side by side to the original prototype. And what we can see now, DCS BAS is streaming data to both of them, so any change in the SIM is updated on both. But 
But as great as the original was, I'm loving the redesign and particularly that vacuum filled display. While some of the panels are still very early doors in their development, it's good to see some of them, like the countermeasures panel, almost complete now. They just need a bit more of a tidy up and some extra running tests. I continue the work with stripping down the tornado panel and we can see the innards of that now. So I can take these two really cool looking toggles and I can go ahead and install those into the AAP. And we'll take a look at that now from a couple of different angles. So yeah, looking good. The electric panel's taking shape. We can see a few different shots of that now. And like with all panels in the later stages, I start to bring them online and run a number of tests. So this panel was as simple as it was to take the, pro the original prototype we looked at in the last video and just strip it down and reuse those toggle switches in the new machined fascia. With the ILS panel, I take the original that we can see on screen now, strip that down and add in some new parts. Those new parts include a white seven segment display and some 3D prints which will extend the width of the panel to give it the overhang for mounting. And what we can see now is the ILS panel rebuilt. So some good improvements to that panel now that it's all brought up to spec. Following the ILS panel, the next one to look at would be the TACAN panel. What was interesting about this panel was that it was to use a white alphanumeric display. And in running various tests as I now bring it online, I'm really pleased with the way that component works and the way it looks. So with all these panels now, I'm really getting to the point where I can't wait to get them all installed into the right console frame and to be able to use them all at the same time. As I mentioned before, I do plan into the future to 3D print all of the knobs for the A10C and work my way through the sim pit, replacing all of the general purpose ones for those. As the various panels take shape, it's time to build up the RS485 network that will drive the majority of them. The oxygen regulator, a quite straightforward one to build. I'm just bringing it online here and just running some various tests. I did use some frosted acrylic for the flow indicator. And here we have the environment panel. So again, just running some initial tests and looking to bring it online. And here we have the Haas panel, quite a straightforward one to do. We'll just take a moment to look at that backlit. So that's looking good. We then move on to one of the placeholders, which in this case is the recorder panel. And as can be seen here, I've machined some grooves into the acrylic and then out of some acrylic, some strips which I can glue into place to give that raised profile effect. So I start to build up the panel and then just test some backlighting. And the final panel to look at will be the caution light panel. What we can see on screen now is the original prototype I made, but then also another view of that where it leads to the improvement I want to make, which is to have two LEDs per window so the cascaded light can illuminate all of the text. So we can see here the mounting of the LEDs on the original panel, and now we can see version two. And we'll just take a close up look at that. So we can see the new machine fascia. In fact, I've actually machined two fascias, which we'll look at closely in a minute. The custom PCB, then the LEDs and mounting headers to solder to it. 
So I spent some time to solder everything in place and we can see that now. Interestingly, in the original, I took the approach of a matrix and that was using Max 7219. In this version, I'm just simply using them all as individually addressable or wide into individual Arduino pins. So what we have now is the original and then a side by side of that to the new version. And the new version looks like it will cast enough light now to illuminate the wider text. And we can see a good example of that now. I did also machine a second fascia in frosted acrylic that we can see here. But if we now go ahead and put that in place, the light is not cascaded as evenly. It's not dispersed through the frosted acrylic in the same way as the opal. And the light even bleeds in between windows. So I'll definitely stick with the opal acrylic in this case. But it's always good to run these tests and see the comparables. And now begins the process of wiring up the back of the caution light panel. So that's a good rundown of the progress made to this point. In the next video, we'll take some time to look at the completed panels, which will be ready for their installation into the right console. Thanks for watching.